On this episode, the legend, the Hall of Famer, the all-timer, Roy Jones Jr. Yeah, is yeah. in the building. Body hit. This is Gary Vay Nerdchuck, and this is episode 273 of the Ask Gary V Show. And for all of you that know me, obviously I named one of my books Jab, 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 Right Hook. <laughs> I'm a huge boxing fan, and to be in the presence of one of the all time greatest to ever do it is super exciting to me, especially with his musical and entrepreneurial and other ventures outside the ring. And because I watch so much damn boxing, he's obviously had an incredible post outside the ring announcing career. I mean, you may go in the Hall of Fame as an announcer. <laughs> uh, Roy Jones Jr. is in the building. Champ, it's really good to have you here. Thank you, my brother. My man, how are here. you? I think I'm good. Roy, I'm good. For, the, for the couple of people who are watching this who don't know who you are, mm -hmm. give us a little story. Give us the origin story in comic book talk. Where are you from? How did your career transpire? And what are you up to today? I'm from Pensacola, Florida. Uh, my career transpired because I played football first, right? When I played football, I was the quarterback and the defensive right end. Well, sometimes when I played quarterback, guys would get a lick on me because I ran the ball a lot as a quarterback. <laughs> and on defense, I got around... On defense on right in, I always usually try to get my leg back. Well, some of the guys that played on the bigger teams didn't play on defense. They just played, I mean, didn't play on offense. They just played on defense. Mm -hmm. So they hit me and I couldn't hit them back. Bam. Ain't gonna work. I need somebody to hit you back right now and a lot of times. You understand me? So I start So right, right, real quick. I love this. So you're saying for a lot of people like sports the way I do, when you're younger, junior high and under, mm -hmm. you are playing both sides of the field. And mm -hmm. since you were getting drilled, that was okay because yeah. you knew you had an at-bat. Well, I'm gonna get you back. But once high school started and people played just no, one. No, when the team, when I said bigger time, I mean like teams that had more players. I see. They had an offense and a defense. We e didn't have a lot of players. Uh -huh. and I was like the best player on my team. Uh -huh. So I played both sides. We didn't have a lot of players. Just enjoying hitting you. You yeah, didn't get I that said, lick no, it's back. It's not gonna work. So I need to find me another sport. So how old were you when you got into I boxing? About, I was about ten when I started boxing. Why did that happen? Well, because I, I seen my friend get a black eye in baseball. He couldn't hit the ball back and give it a black eye. So I said that won't work. <laughs> I couldn't get my I couldn't get my lick back quick enough in football because some guys play offense, but they didn't play. I mean, play defense, but they didn't play offense. So I couldn't get my lick back there. You, you know what? I'm gonna listen. I want everybody who's watching the show or listening on the podcast to understand. You're not gonna like this episode as much because I'm such a boxing nerd. I'm gonna bring up some really esoteric nuances that is gonna go way over the head of a lot of people, but I'm being selfish today because Roy's in the building. Roy, I find this funny. Your thesis is, if I, you know, I didn't mind getting hit as long as I had the chance to hit back. Right. Right? right. We're hearing it over and over. Over and over again. What I find fascinating is, I don't think, especially the real young people or don't really, really follow boxing, realize you are in all time, for everybody, you gotta hear this, it's funny to me, you are in all time great defensive fighter. Right. Like, all time. Like, you are so good defensively in your career. Mm -hmm. I find it funny that the hit, getting hit and then hitting back was the thesis mm -hmm. to somebody who was so ridiculously difficult to hit. Right, that's why I was difficult to hit because I knew that the baseball gave him a black eye. Ain't no <laughs> baseball gonna hit me. You understand, I understand. me? And in football, if you hit me, it's because I'm a big target. You got to be able to tackle me. Of course. Me. But I'm going to get my leg back. But what happened was in boxing, I figured out I can get my leg back five or six times to one. Uh -huh. Oh, those are great stats. You like those odds. Yeah. And then your speed was so obnoxious. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. And his head. It really like, was, guys. Go head, to YouTube. Look, the, look it up. I'm telling you right now. And has told it. It is all over. Like... It's a, you know, I obviously in modern times, a lot of you know that Floyd is an all-time great defensive fighter. There's a difference between the two of them. This Also, the at the weights they fought at, and we'll yeah. get into the heavyweight stuff, which is insane. Um, your speed was off the charts. It was off the charts, and my head, because your head is a smaller target than your whole body, it made it difficult because you got to hit this small head. Yeah. So with that being said, I said, now, after watching Muhammad Ali do that to Joe Frazier, I got myself something. Box and they can't beat me. They can't win. So what happened? Did boxing click right away? You walk in the gym, like literally was the first day, like every like mm -hmm. was it obvious? Mm -hmm. It was not obvious at all. It was not obvious until my father taught me the basic craft. Yep. Once he taught me the basic craft, when we went to our first situation where we had fights, we had exhibition fights. Mm -hmm. I think I stood out, me and one other guy stood out more so than everybody else. Who was the other guy? The other guy's name was Curtis Green. He Curtis was the Green. older guy. He was about 15. Okay. I was only 10. But Curtis Green was ridiculously fast, too. So I knew at some point my father liked that speed. 
So I said, okay, I got to get fast one day too. But I stood out because I was doing things that nobody seen young kids do. And uh, I was pretty pretty good. Were you hooked right away? I was hooked. You right fell away. in love. Yeah. Well, because I can get my lick back. Now I can get it back four or five to one. <laughs> We need to get this man a t-shirt about getting that lick back. I got to have Roy, my lick back. Did, what, at 10, you start boxing. Mm. Within that same year or maybe at 11 or 12, like when did you say, I'm going to be a professional boxer? Well, at I 10, at no, 15? No, 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 no. At, I just said I got about 15, 14. 14. Yeah, 14. And really at 14, I really wasn't sure I was going to be a professional. I was sure that I wanted to try to go to the Olympics. Right. Yeah. And I there's a whole this. story there. Yeah, there's a whole story. Why don't so, you give the quick story to everybody? Well, the story there was I trained from when I was 10 to when I was 19 to go to the Olympics. I get to the Olympics. I beat up everybody over there, and I come home with the most outstanding boxer of the tournament, the best amateur boxer in the world, basically. But I got a silver medal. What the hell is wrong with that bitch? Well, I'll tell you what's wrong with it. It was the <laughs> most ridiculous situation maybe in Olympic boxing yep. history. And there was more ridiculous about it is 30 years later, and they still haven't reversed it. Have you been fighting for the reversal? I don't fight for nothing. No, I let y'all have that. I can't get my leg back, so y'all go ahead and we'll move on past that one. You feel me? So, yeah. Now, had, he start, had, he, had he turned professional, you would beat the shit I, out I, of I'd him. I got my leg back. So I'll fight <laughs> you. Listen, I'll fight you under one condition the gold medal has to be up. He didn't go professional? No, he never had another What'd fight. What'd he do? He knew he was lucky. Have you ever he, seen him? You want, no, I ain't never seen him. Somebody let me talk to him on the phone once. Yeah? Yeah. He's when? coach. He's coaching. Um, a guy called me. They was at a world amateur tournament, and he's coaching the Korean team now. Interesting. See, the thing what did he say? He just spoke to say ask how it was, but what he said after the fight, the night after the fight, I had the interpreter ask him. Yeah. After the fight, I said, ask him, do he think he really won? Because he really, if he said, yeah. Hey guys, it, honestly, listen, it's listen, the no. most, like. Listen, it, I told her to ask him because that was going to be my comfort, my peace. Yeah. So he said, no, I knew I didn't win. That was good enough for me. I see. Because man to man, we closed the For book. a lot of the casual people listening, watching, everybody knows there's a lot of bad decisions in boxing. I'm telling you right now, it is for hardcore boxing people might be the worst of all time, yeah, which it says a whole lot. Well, if he doesn't win the goal off this, then I think there's something rotten in Korea because that is absolutely one of the most dominant things I've seen. The winner is on point three two in the blue corner. Well, there it is. Park Sihan has stolen the belt. This is worse than bad because I was the youngest kid on the Olympic team, and you think in the Olympics. You don't have a prop, you feel me? So in the Olympics, you're thinking, hey, in the Olympics, I'm good. But it's like, <laughs> in the Olympics, you get robbed. That's pretty rough. You know? So good. You go pro. Yeah. What happens next? Become a beast. Now I got something to prove. Now I got to get my lick back. Did my you, gold medal. Do you feel that that became a chip on your shoulder? Of that, course. So, <laughs> what? So, well, I, no, no, here's I understand cat. that. Here's a cat that won his lick back. Now y'all don't rob me of my gold medal? Come so on. do you believe that flat out you had a better professional boxing career because you got a silver medal? Yes, without a doubt. That's the blessing that God gives us. That's how I tell people all the time. You got to know how to take a negative and let God turn into a positive for you. He took the biggest negative I thought that I've ever encountered in my life or endured in my life and turned it to the best positive for me that it ever could have been. That's how I rose and became pound for pound number one. To give you an example of that, I was at the Olympics as a junior middleweight. Yep. 156 pounds. Yep. I come home, I turn professional as a junior middleweight. Yep. 154 pounds. Yep. No person has ever turned professional as a junior middleweight and became heavyweight champ of the world. Well, that's, yeah, I mean, we'll get no into- No person. Right, the amount of people that have ever gone, for, I mean, Cruiser <laughs> is like lightweight, but the jump that you made, yeah. John Ruiz fight, right? Yep, yep. Um, and, oh, about the defense, I meant to tell you this too, I was the first person in country box history ever to go a whole three-minute round without getting hit. Huh? And they talk about Andy. Florida's defense. What? What? Do, you, do you, get, you, you know, it's funny. I was going to ask. Yeah, I'm glad you brought it up because yeah. I'm trying to navigate here. Yeah, I'm trying to be strategic. I, you. I you see you where I'm you're going. You, you saw that I created a little bit of an opening. I'm with you here. I'm very, fa I call it the Willie Mays rule. Mm -hmm. I was fascinated when I was a kid. I'm super, you can see Chachka sports, mm -hmm. boxing, mm -hmm. all of it. I was fascinated when I started realizing, you know, I'm 42. Mm -hmm. So athletes started getting really paid in the 80s mm -hmm. by comparison. Mm -hmm. You know, the best baseball player who was the most famous people, Willie Mays, Mickey Mouse. Yogi Bear, these people had jobs in the, in the off season because athletes didn't get paid. I was always fascinated, the chip on the shoulder of, you know, if when Charles Barkley's entire NBA career, money making, is being made by a average NBA player today in two years, exactly. I always think about that. Exactly. I was thinking, huh, Floyd, listen, I'm a huge Pernell Whitaker fan, like an all time Pernell Whitaker fan. Now, I'm getting nerdy, I know. This guy was very defensive, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You're a puncher, so you're mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. 
Pernell Whitaker is even historically less of a puncher even than Floyd. He is, he is. But I loved him because I like boxing for the same reason I like NFL football. It's the only two sports that I watch mm. that I know I know a lot more than even an educated fan. Mm, exactly. So when I watch NFL football game, I watch my left tackle line up and try to see if his foot is out to the left or the right to know mm-hmm. if they're going to run. Like little subtle you things. You know what you're looking at. Correct. Mm-hmm. So the reason you were so interesting to me is I thought your defense was so insane. It was. That it was so ridiculously entertaining while I understand why people get mad at Floyd and definitely Pernell Whitaker. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I went Pernell, you, Floyd, I understand it. But do you have, Roy, another chip on your shoulder that your defensive all-time greatness, which I think easily stacks with Floyd, Mm -hmm. in today's social media world, if you were boxing today, uh, do you think about fuck, if I was boxing today with the way, with your charisma and social media that you would be exponentially? I know, I know that would be without without a doubt, but my point is that I don't cow or spill milk. And so it's like, for me, I take things like this star vision thing where they give me an opportunity to bring my skills to an app and give it back to people. Let's talk about that. You went right into that. Yeah, I, I like the that. right hook that you just yeah. threw. Yeah, exactly. I, I love your strategy yes, right now. Yes. You've been bobbing and weaving. Now you just punched me in the yeah. face. I like it. <laughs> Tell, let, let us, let's go right into it. What, what do you, you, you parallel into it. Where, where are you at right now? We'll go back to boxing, yeah, we'll go back to but boxing. this is a business crowd yeah, anyway. Yeah, exactly. So first of all, everybody knows, and I put out unlimited Instagram content of like chips on the shoulder. Mm-hmm. Losses are good. Mm-hmm. Like, Clearly, it's th- I'm thrilling for me to realize how much the silver medal debacle created your upside. Talk to me about why you just dropped the mention of that app and why you're doing it and where you're at as modern Floyd. We'll go back to boxing, yeah. but modern mo- modern Roy, excuse me, go ahead. The reason I dropped that was because I missed that, uh, uh, what they call it, the, the era with the, what we just called it. Social? Social media era. Right. Era. I missed that era in a right. sense. HBO I was, was in of, control of yeah, you, how yeah. big or not big your kinda, brand was, yeah. not you and right. a phone. I was kind of at the back of that era, mm-hmm. right? I was at the beginning of that era. 100%. So because of that, the only way I can reach back and tap into it is to create something like Star Vision did here to where I can offer people my expertise, the opportunity to know what it feels like, my thought pattern even, when I'm in, in the ring fighting. So by giving that to people, it's something you're going to want to see too because you being a bigger boxing fan as you are, you're going to want to know sometimes what does he think or what was he thinking at that time. I share a lot of that on this Star Vision app. And the app is available today in the Star Vision, V-I-Z-N, not V-I-S-I-O-N, V-I-Z-N. So link it up. Jake. Go get Jake, that. Jake, are you going to are you gonna listen to this Hall of Famer and link it up? You promise? And listen, you're going to- Jake, it, did you ever see Roy fight? Don't lie. He'll get pissed. Yeah. Well, listen. It's a huge listen, mistake. No, I won't get pissed. That's, I won't get, I won't get I'm pissed. pissed, right? I won't get pissed, though, but you go on YouTube, you'll find it. And here's, here's how it explains to you. There are a lot of fighters who have a lot of highlights, right? If you put your kid down and say, hey, look, look at these three fighters. Get any three you want. Just make sure I'm one of them, and you can make me first or third. It don't matter. I guarantee your kid says, I want to see that guy again. Why? Because it's more exciting than any other fighter that ever lived. Because it was slash that. entertaining? It was entertaining. I know it was. It was Is that why you think? That's why I know. Let's talk about the Jordan brand thing. Mm-hmm. I see it. I was going to bring it up. Mm-hmm. How many boxers have ever been put on on, on the jump Once man? Once again, I was the first Jordan boxer, the first boxer ever be put on right. jump man. Now, you need to know this. I hate Michael Jordan. Why you hate Michael? Because I'm a real Knicks fan, mm-hmm. and if you're 42, okay, you. and you're yeah. from Jersey or New York yeah. or the East Coast, well, and yeah. you're a real Knicks fan, well, I gotta get this off, I got you. you can't be a Jordan. Right. You can't, that's right. some bullshit. <laughs> I've never worn a pair of Jordans. Carmelo, you can see him hanging right there. Mm-hmm. My man, when mm-hmm. we started becoming friends, he mm-hmm. wanted to send me a bunch of pairs of Jordans. Mm-hmm. I've never worn a pair. Mm-hmm. I hate Michael Jordan. Right. But, obviously I respect the Jumpman thing, and mm-hmm. I thought that was a huge deal at the time. Mm-hmm. Was that a big thing for you? It was a huge thing for me because he was my favorite athlete. Of course. And with that winning mentality that, that he had, it set him aside from everybody else. I and get what, it. And the problem I got with it is that we hate Michael, you hate Michael Jordan in a sense, and you already hate By him. By the way, I know, nobody I know hates Michael Jordan besides me. Yeah, no, no. But I think I'm the and, only and Michael and Jordan and hater on earth. And you don't really hate Michael Jordan. I respect the piss out of him. No, yeah. no, I actually hate him. No, let me finish But up. the respect is all time. But let me explain, let me explain something. When you respect somebody like that, it's almost impossible to hate him because you got too much respect to I hate totally him. I totally understand. Let me finish, That's exactly that. right. You got too much respect to hate That's him. That's true. Yet you hate what he does and that he had to be the one to do it to your team. I cried, right? I would have too if I was lit. You, you, the, you should. I'm 18 years old. You should. Senior year of high school, hey, crying. Hey, when I first lost, I seen grown men come to me crying. When you lost to Tarver? Yes. 
grown men. How much do you talk about that, or if at all? I don't little? care, bro. It's, it's, no, no, it's no, I know. It's our reality. It's our reality. I don't yeah. think you care. No, How much about, do you talk about it? I don't talk about it much. Just when people ask, I do tell them because I don't mind telling the truth. What but happened, in your opinion? Just went up in weight and lost a whole lot of weight quick. That's but what I, I, yeah. but I had the title in my mind first. That's why I put myself together to get through that first fight. Mm hmm. What I should have done was stop, retire for a little while, and then let my body get back together. Mm -hmm. I put too much on my body that I can't right back. And it's hard it for a good guy. Do you have any kind of yeah, relationship? Yeah, we cool. Yeah, we good. He's, he's a good dude. He's, he's a good dude. Yeah. He had a good career. He had a good career. He's a good guy. I mean, he's you made his career. He should thank me for his career, <laughs> but he's a good guy. You know. But uh, anyway, back to where I was. Mike was the ultimate winner. Yes. You understand me? And because I get Mike, it, man. Because Mike was the ultimate winner, he was my favorite athlete after Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali was. The How old are you again, Roy? Forty nine. Yeah. Muhammad Ali was the ultimate, 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 ultimate. ultimate. But Mike was right behind him to me. So with that being said, I was so thrilled to become a Michael Jordan athlete because yeah. that meant you were the pinnacle. When's you the first the time you talked to him? Uh, the year I signed with him, which I'm not sure what years. I'll Understood. Know, but whatever year I signed with he him. He called first, you? Well, I called him. We met at his office. I talked to Fun. him. That was, yeah, it was, it was Loved beautiful. Loved it. Loved it. <laughs> him meeting Muhammad Ali, Michael Jordan, and Barry Sanders was three of my favorite things to do. Barry was all And the only reason I wouldn't say Emmett Smith because Emmett Smith was from my hometown. Yeah. And so, so you we, knew him we, a little? We kind of grew yeah, up together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you were from Detroit, you would have looked at him differently. Right. He beat I totally from, get he beat, it. He beat me in basketball every year in middle school, so I know him good from that. So I love that. <laughs> so the entrepreneurial thing now. Yeah. So on this app, because oh, I, I want to explain yeah, it. Yeah. I was also saying, though, that having that Star Vision app Gives me an opportunity to capitalize on the social media world, hundred percent, and to catch up with so the what, things people that I pay, missed. So, what people pay? Break it down for me. What does the app do? Do you know? Like, yeah, you pay. You pay to go on, and you we teach you how to work out. We teach you things that we it did live, me. or you recorded. It's recorded. We Understood. did live, but me, Jerry Rice, uh, Steve Nash, um, what Robert Orr is a few of us that did it, and it's like we give you beautiful workout. premium quality content yes. that is subscription, or you pay for. Yes, and you get to pick the which athlete. Which athlete? You want, and is it you workout training, or is it actually you giving insights to boxing? It's both. I teach you how to box and everything. It's both. It's workout training, and I'm giving insights. You ready, both. Andy? I teach Time you everything. Time to start boxing. You should be good by and by and by about a two month period. You should be pretty good. Is that right? Yeah, in about a two month period. If you pay attention and do it every day, you should be pretty good in about two months. Roy, was it funny to you that other athletes from other sports didn't understand the cardio aspect of a three minute boxing round? No, like, it's not. It's not funny because when I first started boxing, my daddy gave us a lesson in it. We got a uh, he had a guy, two guys that worked with him. One was a marathon runner, could run twenty six miles. One was a firefighter, couldn't run one mile. They got in there, and both of them were good for about 25 seconds, and they both were dead. <laughs> so I you know, learn, man. It's so you learn right then that. It's the craziest no what, workout. No what you think you do, until you go in that ring and do that, <laughs> you don't know what you're getting Boy, into. Do you, do you see what's happening with boxing uh, becoming a huge cultural trend? Do you know that like all these boxing gyms are opening mm -hmm. up, and it's super trendy, and like mm -hmm. Soul Cycle, you got mm -hmm. the rumbles, and mm -hmm. what, what do you think about that? Do you think, think it's, it's interesting thing. that models are boxing? Like, like I think it's an interesting thing. Um, it must be cool for you, right? Yeah, it's so interesting that I have a, a girl that I trained is pretty much a model from Germany. Yep. Ikram Kerat, she's pretty good. Then because my wife saw that, you know, she got pretty good at it, my wife started training. Really? Yeah, so it's like I trained both of them. That's fun. And it's like they they like they catch on quicker than guys do. Let's talk about music. Mm -hmm. It was such a core thing. I you know, being somebody who loved hip hop mm -hmm. and loved boxing, I remember that being a pretty big theme. I remember I don't know if it was a label or like a joint yeah, venture. I I, yeah, I remember. I I wasn't sure. I'm glad. Mm -hmm. So such a big part of your life, clearly. Yep. yep. By the head entertainment, you know, BHE, that was me. Yep. 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 And so what, why was it always there? Do you see it as an entrepreneurial venture? Is that you were you were so and again, I'm painting a picture for a lot of 25 year olds. It's really hard for me to really paint a picture for you guys. In the way that I talk about hacking culture, Roy was the best boxer in the world, but he crossed over so substantially yep. in his prime. It was interesting. When you did the music, so I just launched a sneaker not mm -hmm. too long ago, and it's because I think entrepreneurship can cross over. It can. Your, your athletic ability made you cross over into culture. Numerous references to you in songs and things of mm -hmm. that nature. How do you look at music? Are you romantic about music as an art and you just love it? Or did you look at it from an entrepreneurial venture or both? How'd it go? Both. I look at it from an entrepreneurial event, adventure, yet I also love it. And I know that it's a form of expression that very few people can really put a song together that expresses something for everybody. Mm -hmm. That's when you get a hit. When you put a song together that expresses something for everybody, you got a hit. My man, God bless the dead, my man, Mr. Magic, he came to me with a hook one day. I said, that's going to be the hottest song of the summer. The hook was, I smoke, mm -hmm. I drink, mm -hmm. I supposed to stop, but I can't. Now, I don't smoke or drink. 
But you but understood the, the I understood audience. Understood, and I understood how many people do smoke and drink. <laughs> yes. And want to yes. stop, but they can't. It, I said, "Dude, that's it. Yep, that's it. Yep, that is it. Truth." Yes. Yeah, so when you can express a truth for people in a way that they can't really express it, you give them a way to express themselves. Who's the most interesting young fighter in boxing right now? Uh, Vasily Lomachenko. Flat out. Flat out. Flat out. Can do so many things. Watched me as a kid over in I Ukraine. I see it. I see so it. So cool. I mean, can do everything. Has he given you huge love? Yes. I yes. see a lot so of listen, his listen, game. Can do How many fights? Didn't he have 100 something fights? No, 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 no. 395 and one. And he beat the guy that beat him two more times. I after know. That. I know. 395 and one. And one, Roy, he wait. lost his second fight professionally, right? Because he yeah, made a crazy yeah, jump, right? No, he didn't make a crazy jump. The kid didn't make weight. The kid came in heavy. Uh-huh. Yeah, the kid did something to him that he never seen before. Which was? Wrestle and make it a rough, ugly fight. And over in, over in the eastern part of the world, they don't fight like that. I understand. They fight clear and clean. Uh-huh. You don't get to hold and uh-huh, wrestle. The elbow. But the Mexicans know about it because uh-huh. they've been surviving like that for years. Uh-huh. But, the, but the eastern Europeans were not able to turn pro up, up until a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. So they are not as... As Why did in, they turn the corner in this last decade? Well, they had to because a lot of kids want to get out of the country. A lot like, of kids want to go so, where they can make money and do things on their own. So, do you, uh, you to ahead. be honest with you, with the walls falling, with the USSR going yep. down, and with this, you know, that type of life changing, now people get an opportunity to go out and make their own life. Roy, you just said something that I heard Larry Merchant say when I was a. 10 years old, which is, if you want to know where the great boxing's coming from, Mm -hmm. it's the people that are the hungriest and have the least Mm -hmm. because the nature of the sport Mm -hmm. is, you know, you kind of just said that in a different way. Do you believe in that truth? Well, I do believe in that truth in some sense, but here's what the real truth is. The real truth is is it does come from that hunger because you need that hunger to survive and to want to go about things and do things, yet some of the real boxing now, though, is coming from the area where they're where they have schools, mm-hmm. where the kids grew up in the school of boxing mm-hmm. because they had the same hunger already because mm-hmm. most of them were living in, in um, what they call it, um, like the Soviet Union was, with the com- communism. Mm-hmm. Most of them were living in that. So yep. they couldn't really go out and do their own thing. Yep. But they grew up forced to go through these schools and learn. That's right. So when they got older, now that the communism has failed, they're able to go out and, and do have a things, little freedom. Have a little freedom and do their own thing. But they got this instilled in them already. Same with the Cubans. The Cubans were, if you think about it, the Russians and the Cubans, and when I say Russians, you got to put the Ukrainian, mm-hmm. all those guys. The former Soviet Russians. Union. Yeah. Yep. Those guys are dominating the Olympics right now. Yep. They dominate. We don't even hardly get gold medals no more because we, we of have, them. We have nothing, bro. But because they grew up in schools where they were forced to go to school and learn how to box. And it has the emergence of the money in basketball and football, you think, t- like if LeBron James wanted to be a boxer because he was born 40 years earlier, do mm-hmm. you believe that the athletes that make the great fighters like yourself are now choosing basketball? No, I don't believe that. I'm so what's why happening? I'm tell you why I don't believe that. What the problem is for us, and you got to think about it like I just told you a little while ago. Yep. We have one Olympian every four years that comes out, used to emerge to be somebody, right? That's right. They don't have one. They do well as a whole unit. That's right. They bring a team. So systematically. That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. They bring a team full of guys that are capable of winning a gold medal every time. We bring one or two guys who stand out. The rest of them are average. Right, a little who, bit above average because they beat the other guys to get there, but you know. Right, you made such an unbelievable transition to behind the mic. Mm-hmm. Who do you admire historically? Who do you think are some of the best announcers or boxing personalities in history? I mean, it's a lot of them. Burt Sugar, uh, Howard Cosell, uh, I love Jim Lampley, uh, Larry Merchant was good, Max is very, very good. There are a lot of guys who were good, um, but you know, I just, I don't really, I never looked at it like that yep. because I look at it as though I'm a guy who knows because I was in there. You were in there. So it's a little bit easier for me to tell you exactly what's going on in there. A lot. Than it is for these guys because they've never been in there. Of course. So you have to kind of make that balance and try to make it work as a balance. A hundred percent. And that's why Emmanuel Stewart was so great that's at what exactly he did because right. he had his own different He'd perspective. Been He'd been yep. in there before, mm-hmm. yes. So what about, what about the next chapter? The how next, are you thinking about your next decade, the next two decades? How, next, are you, how are you strategizing victory going forward? Star Vision is my first victory. That, yes. that gives me my social media miss days that bring them back for me. Are you, so that's an app where you're monetizing. Are mm-hmm. you putting out content on Twitter and Instagram? Yes. Have of you gotten course. serious about that? Of course. I'm not as serious as I probably should be, uh-huh. but I do just Are you willing to make a commitment on this social media show that you're going to make a bigger commitment? I'm going to make a bigger commitment. Okay, I have got to it. because with Star Vision. Locked in. Because with Star <laughs> a lot Vision, of people are real happy yeah. right now, Roy. With Star Vision, the team I have is to ha- make a bigger commitment. The team is happy right now. I know they are. I know they are. And Does it not come natural to you? Uh, 
or be, you know what's crazy to me? Mm. As somebody who knows a hell of a lot more about you than you know about me, okay. you are a layup mm -hmm. to be ridiculously successful in that right. environment, right. given your personality. Yeah, but my problem is that I've been so back hill in my whole life. I always hold back because I was a guy who I don't like to offend people. Okay. And I don't care what people like because I do what I do and I don't care what you do. You feel me? So, right. Uh, yes, so I feel you my tremendously. Point, my point, my, my I, I live is, it myself. Yeah, I'm so always going to so, do me, so but there's people that get offended and right, I hate it. Exactly. But the thing is, I don't like to sit there because I'm a fighter first by nature. You know, I always like to get my leg back. Right. So if you I got me punch caught up into face. that, now I'm, now I'm going to be going back and forth and I don't need that. So I try to avoid it because I know what I'm capable of getting So into. I'm excited right now. You're telling me and it makes a hell of a lot of sense for it to me right now, that one of the things that made you concerned about going all in on social was when somebody said some bullshit. I want my lick back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's incredible. Uh, listen, I say, listen, I'm already scared. I get it. You understand what no, I'm so about. you really, right? Yeah. You so thought I you would get dragged. You well, knew that you. Well, you know that some people got those bad opinions. You feel me? Mm -hmm. But you have to learn to let them people have their opinion. They, they are entitled to their opinion. So it's like it's best to not get yourself overly indulged in it. Or me, I ain't gonna argue but so long, now I wanna fight. Give me your opinion on Errol Spence Jr. I think he's a pretty good fighter. He's got a little way to go, but he's a pretty good fighter. I'm really into him. I like him, but I'm not I haven't gotten sold on him yet because Well he hasn't he has got more work to do. Mm -hmm. He got but more work to do. But what what do you think like all of you did on yeah. the way up? Yeah, but she ain't listen to me. They got listen to me good. Good. When I say I haven't gotten into him yet, it's because when I see a guy fight, it's like when Sugar Ray Leonard's brother, Roger Leonard, first seen me at 17. He said, man, this dude is an old man. You know what that means? Experience. He knows so much, mm -hmm. and he do so much in the ring that it seemed like he'd been here before. They don't show me that a lot. I seen it when I first saw Lomachenko. I told Max, and all, I said, that was the best fighter fighting right now. Thing right there, they said, how you know that? I just know. Why you think that? They said, I'm looking at him. He's old. It's like, it's like, it's like I like the little kid, Chocolatito. Yeah. But Chocolatito ain't never showed me the stuff Lomachenko showed me. I understand. So for you to put Chocolatito pound on pound him one, you're wrong because he hasn't showed me he can fight going back this way yet. He hasn't showed me he can fight going that way or that way. He only showed me he can fight going that way. That's one dimensional. So does that then carry over into your your points of view on the heavyweight division where clearly for the first time there's a fight that the world may want, mm -hmm. but they're awfully one dimensional guys. Which is why it shouldn't happen yet because the one guy who's totally one dimensional needs to get more multi-dimensional before they make the fight. But he's running his mouth and he wants the payday. He don't want the payday. The other guy does. The guy who is one dimensional, but his one dimension is a hell of a dimension. That's wilder. <laughs> yep. His one dimension is one dimension, but it's a hell of a dimension. So, so you, you think he rather not have the upper hand you, so he can talk. <laughs> you think Wilder's ridiculous wide like haymakers yeah. are too dangerous for Joshua? Well, let me let me what, what if they fought, who would you think would well, win? Let me cut it down for Please. Like this. I love Joshua as a person. As a fighter, I love him to death. He's like the coolest dude. If I had to say, if I, if, if, if God came in and said right now, make one guy your champion that you thought you want your kids to look up to, I'm going to pick Anthony Joshua. I agree. You understand where I'm coming yes. from? Because he's that kind of guy. Yes. But experience-wise, if, if Klitschko can drop you with a right hand, and Klitschko is, what, 40 years old? His right hand ain't fast or as good as Wilder's. But it's straighter. Who? Klitschko's. No, 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 no. You haven't watched Wilder lately. Wilder has developed into a killer. Wilder's well, he's right. a killer. No, 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 no. That straight right hand is all he really has. He ain't knock nobody out with nothing else. He not knock you out with no jab, no hook, no upper. He ain't knock you out with nothing else but the straight right hand. And that's what Klitschko took. I saw. Uh, uh, Joshua and rocked him. Down. No, he took him down with it. I saw. Yeah, he ain't rock him. He rocked Respect, him. He yeah. Him down. So if he can get him down with that, if Wilder hits him with that, the fight might be over. I get it. So that's why I'm afraid for Joshua right now. I so say he needs to go get a little bit better first. Then let's make the fight happen. So then it's an even fight. Right now, I think the right. Because What's the best punch that Wilder's been hit with? Do you with? Think? Yeah, with. With. I think David Hay hit him with an overhand right and sparring and had him buckle for a minute. <laughs> but that's the best punch to hit him with is the overhand right because he's tall. Yeah. But I haven't seen, I think um, Joshua's best punch maybe his left up, is right uppercut. Hmm. And you, you got to be close to laying that. So all the punches we talk about, even the overhand right, you got to be, that's a Mike Tyson type punch. Mm -hmm. You got to be closer to laying those punches. Mm -hmm. Wilder that's why I work when you were shorter. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's why I'm thinking mm -hmm. Wilder got the better chance because he's out there. So, Do you think that's going to be a super fight? Uh, if they Do you think it's going to happen? If they, if they keep winning, yes. And if they build it right, it'll be a super fight, yes. Do you think, you don't think it's happening next? It shouldn't happen yet, next. Do you think it's going to happen next? I don't think so. Do you think McGregor is going to go back into the ring? 
I'm sure he will. Because the money's too big. Why not? Agreed. Yeah. Who do you think he fights? Either Pacquiao or De La Hoya. De La Hoya asked for him. Pacquiao, he wants to go to the ring. He knows Pacquiao. They all want. They all want. They're, it's Why all there, right? Not? Why would they not? What else is going on in culture, business? Let's get out of the, you know, squared circle. Mm-hmm. What else is going on? You know, obviously that mm-hmm. is part of the plan for mm-hmm. next 20 years. Right. What else are you thinking about? Well, I'm going to take this. Then I'm going to take it worldwide. Oh, because crap. You know what? I'm having so much fun. We're not even doing calls. I know. Face, you forgot too? No, I didn't forget. You've been I'm so captivated by this? <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Facebook, put in your phone numbers. Let's do this. Let's get some calls in for Roy. Business, boxing, whatever you want to go with. I'd love to get some boxing. As you can tell, I'm nerding out. Uh, uh, go ahead while we get some phone calls. Andy, you can go I'll right into so it. Go ahead. Trying to take the Star Vision. I got to take it worldwide because, you know, also I'm a dual citizen. Are you? Do you I know. Yeah, so being for, a dual citizen of Russia and the United States yeah, of America. Which is a rarity. I want to try to share it all. You know what I'm saying? And what's funny about that, man, it, it's a rarity, but it's not really a rarity. There are several guys that I know. They have United States of course, passports. Of course, that they know Do you know saying? that I was born in Belarus in the former Soviet Union? I can believe it. Yeah. I can believe it. But there I, are several I, I guys left. that yeah. have, and they make an issue of me because I'm a celebrity. Well, look, I think that, I mean, listen, they're making, do listen if can't. you go walk across the street right now, they're going to make an issue. Course, I mean, that's, you know, that's the price you pay for yeah. being Roy Jones Jr. It's all good. <laughs> Who's this? Uh, Brian. Brian? All right, let's see how exciting Brian gets. Brian Kenny. <laughs> I wish it was Brian Kenny. Hi, <laughs> Brian. <laughs> Brian, it's Gary Vaynerchuk, and you're on the Ask Gary V Show with Roy Jones Jr. My man, how well, are you? Yeah, I'm doing good, Brian. How you doing, brother? Hey, I'm doing awesome. And uh, I don't know if you follow the guy right across from you, but you got to follow him, and you got to say, fuck your feelings, Roy. <laughs> you got to say, screw it, man. And not let some 16-year-old kid in... Podunk, Indiana, let you worry about what you're doing. He's, no, no, no. he's not no, worried no, about no, it. He's worried no, about what he's going to no, do to that 16 no, year I'm, I'm not worried about what I'm doing. I used to worry about what, 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 what was going to happen to that kid for, for messing with me when I don't want to be messed with. That's all I was saying. Yeah, Roy's not going to punch him on Twitter. He's going to punch no. him in his face in real life. I, I want to go to the house, find his address, figure out who he is, show up at the front door. Brian, don't, don't worry. Wanna, we'll get him there. After I, the cameras I, go off, I'm going to have a nice little chat. We'll get Roy in the right mindset for a social. And I don't want to be a 16 year old kid. I want to be a grown man with some muscle behind him. I love it. Brian, you got a question? Yeah, I got two questions. Go ahead, sir. First of all, Gary, you got to put the checkerboard fat lacy in the 002s. Got it. Go old school. Dude. I'm in. And then, I know him. Roy, what is your prized possession? That's like, there's that one thing that you hold on to that, like, screw the money, screw everything That's else. This is the one thing. For me, it's the same Christopher medal given to me by my daughter, or by my wife and my daughter. For me, for me, it's the heavyweight belt that God gave me because I never thought in a million years as a kid that I, Roy Jones Jr., would ever be the heavyweight champion of the world. That is Only the grace of God. Yeah, the best is yet to come, too. Thank you, my the brother. The best is yet to come. You're young as fuck. And Gary, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm the guy who gave you, I didn't come this far to come this far. That yep. little plaque. Yep, I, I have it. Yep. Masters, yep. Like, that's still on. That's still on if you want it, my friend. I love it, man. Thank, Thank you. you we'll be in touch. Appreciate right, it, man. Brian, Have a great you. holiday. Yeah. The heavyweight thing is crazy. Let's get another call. Mm-hmm. I agree with you. That is bonkers that you became the heavyweight man, championship. On, and, and you, not only, you dominated that That's fight, complete. but you knew that going, you felt incredibly confident. I'm asking, or did I you, felt what overly was, confident because I knew that I was where God wanted me to be. At that point, right, That's well, up, up to that point, mm-hmm. what was the hardest you were hit? Um... um a guy hit me named Eddie Evans at the fairground in Pensacola. Yeah. <laughs> and let me, let me finish. No, no I'm, like, I'm excited. That's and a giggle of excitement. I stopped him, but I was pissed off because the referee stopped him too quick. I said, I got my lick back, but that ain't good enough. Really? I need a few more. The referee, now how, about the, how about the body yeah, shot the to Virgil? Said, yeah, the referee said he quit. I said, well, he can't quit yet. You're that not ain't finished. good enough. I ain't through yet. Talk to me about the that body a, shot. That was hard, one of the hardest body shots I ever landed. That is an all time. Set it up. Is that so on beautiful. YouTube? Yeah, I set it up so Guys, beautiful. Guys, yes. look at this. Virgil yeah. Hill, right? Uh, right hook to the body. So far, it's Jones's power over Hill's chair. Oh! Right to the body. Down Unheard of. Unheard of. Great fighter. Paya. Virgil was a great fighter. He won a silver medal at the 84 Olympics. Real fighter. Yeah, quick silver. What about James Tony? He was one of the slickest fighters I ever faced in my whole life. Real, like the shoulder, slickest right? Dude, those shoulders. He did all the Floyd, so Mayweather, he, he did all the Floyd Mayweather stuff that Floyd does. I agree. Yeah, he could knock you out at any round. That's right. Yep. Real great fighter. Yep. Who's this? Dwight. Dwight, it's Gary V. You're on the Ask Gary V Show with Roy Jones Jr. 
No fucking way. Yes yeah, fucking way. Dude. Yeah. Finally, what Jesus up? Christ, man. You made it. Oh man, I'm what? so excited, dude. I don't even know like what to ask. Thank you, Dwight. It's so glad to have you on here. I'm glad you got a chance to get through. Wow, uh Roy, bro, you're like my one of my idols, man. You're, hey, thank you, brother. Like the way you weave, man. Like, oh Jesus. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Um uh, is it true that you were gonna fight Buster Douglas, Roy? No, I was never going to fight Buster Douglas. I was trying to fight uh, Mike Anderson, Tyson. What about Anderson Mike Silva? Mike Tyson, what time? I'm still trying to fight Anderson what, Silva right now. You're still trying to do that, right? Yeah, because me, me Yeah, me you don't know about this, Dwight? Me, this is the under-the-radar thing that I think the fighting what? world... Oh, Anderson Silva, kidding. Roy Jones Jr., this has been an undercurrent. I think there's something there. I've been saving it for my punchline, but you went with the Buster thing. I'm like, fuck it. Here's my try chance oh my to slide God. in. I'm an MMA, MMA fighter. Listen, Dude, this, this is a real... Listen, like, listen, bro. Listen, bro, I need to hear it from listen, you. Right here, listen, bro. me and Anderson Silva have been trying to fight way before Floyd Mayweather and McGregor ever thought about this. We've been trying to fight for nine years now, Nobody would, and they wouldn't let him get free to fight me. So it's like, it's wow. ridiculous that they let... But, but it's, like, it's, like, it's like, you know how it is, the racial thing... Black versus white sale tickets, yeah, so they let that happen. But it's like me and him could have did this long time ago, and we were at the pinnacle of our careers when we first started talking about it. So why they still won't let us fight right now? I don't know. Is it's that like, still in the cards? Yeah, he still wants to fight me, and I still want to fight him. So in why what not? Rules? But just boxing. He has thirteen. Well, he has fourteen. I know. He has that's fourteen crazy. professional crazy. boxing I know. matches. I know. So the thing, the different thing about it is he has boxing experience. So it's understand it's conceivable so, that so he quick, can do it. He, both right, unlike McGregor, yeah. they were different. Yeah. Real quick. Dude, Bo Brian, I'm talking to Roy Jones Jr. That's exactly right. <laughs> you sure are, Dwight. Roy, no worries. Wake his ass up. Dwight, uh, Roy. This is Roy Jones Jr. Dude, Roy. Both of you guys want to fight? Both of us want to fight right now, still, and the UFC won't let him free to fight. Got it. Dwight, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I know you're fired up, but I want to make sure you get off what you're trying to say. What was that? Uh, I don't really have any questions. I'm just kind of like in the moment. Uh, listen, right Dwight, now, Dwight, 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 Dwight. Really Dwight. set the blueprint, and I'm just trying to like follow you guys. So I just this is really we appreciate it, Dwight. Right Go ahead. Now, so Thank you, Dwight. Really like my main Dwight, listen, Roy's got something to tell you. Dwight, listen to this. I know you don't have a question, but listen to this. Good, okay? You listening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a fighter, man. Just give, I bet, me, I, give I me something, man. Oh, I'm going to give you something. Well, first thing is you got to keep your mind, keep God first in everything you do. And when you go to fight, know you're going to fight. When you fight, one thing about a real fighter is you're willing to die before you quit. You understand me? That's what I love. That's, yes, what, I believe, that's what I believe in. Second, I'm trying to tell you that I'm 48, going on 49 in January, and I'm still right now, because of how big it is and how big of an event it is and I know what it means to him, I'm still willing to fight Anderson Silver tomorrow if he was free to do it. You're fucking savage. Oh my Dwight, God. Dwight, I need you to tweet Anderson Silva right now and tell him to stop ducking Roy. Matter of fact, I got it on the end of a verse in my song. <laughs> I love it. Dwight, thanks for calling, man. So Anderson's not ducking. This is more of a UFC contract mm -hmm. thing, right? So that makes me feel like there's a chance. I mean, I don't know of how course. long his contract is or I don't yeah, know those contracts got, they, very well. They locked him up for a long time because they knew he wanted to I get it. He's a star. Yeah, so. But he is... Do you Definitely. love watching him fight when he's in hit the yeah, octagon? I loved it. He was my to me like he was my all time favorite. He was crazy. Favorite. Yeah. I mean, got one more for us. Yeah. And where do you sit on the MMA boxing thing? Oh, no, I love it all. Don't get me wrong. I love yep. anybody. Anybody got the heart to go in and face another man at what he does, man to man. I love that. You know what I mean? Anybody. Yep. So, what do you MMA fighting? What do you boxing? What, do what you about wrestling? chess? Chess too. Because mm -hmm. chess is a mental thing. It's a mm -hmm. mental battle, but it's still a battle. Mm -hmm. And you got to sit there and be focused for a long period of time. To outthink somebody. Who's the best trainer in the game right now? Boxing. The best trainer in the game right now, and I hate to say this, uh, with not that I, no, hate I get to say it. it. No, yeah. but I'm just like I, I can't wait to hear be, what you're gonna say. I want to be disrespectful to nobody. I respect that, but it's one man's opinion. Yeah, yeah, but you're not yeah, disrespecting. No, it's not, yeah, yeah, it's opinion to a degree, but it's really not an opinion. <laughs> it's fact. Yeah, it's pretty much a fact. Okay, so set it up. Give it to us now. My dad taught me the best foundation ever. Who else? Has I ever turned it. professional as a junior middleweight and won the heavyweight championship of the world. I love it. So it's very hard. That's the right to say answer, man. Who's number two then? The numbers. The second guy in my book was before he passed was Emmanuel Stewart. A hundred percent, man. Crazy, Emmanuel, right? Listen, Emmanuel Stewart had. I'm talking about. He can go get you a one thirty five pound, a one sixty five pound, a two hundred forty pound. It don't matter what it was when he exactly brings the right. rain. How you mind right? Because you're finna have a problem. Talk to me about the hawk, Aaron Pryor. 
Oh, the Hulk was one of the baddest dudes ever, dude. I'm one a big, dude big ever. Aaron fan. They don't know who he is. The Hulk was one of the baddest dudes you wanna, ever. You're mad you missed social media. The Hulk missed, the, you know, he yeah, just I missed know. it. Just like I said, we, we, but God knows best. God knows what he's doing. He did it for his reason, and that's what we have to do. I'm being with. selfish. Couple more. But, but the Hulk was a bad boy. John the Beast Mugabe. John the Beast Mugabe was a killer, too. Now, Hagler destroyed him, but he, he was did. a killer before Hagler destroyed him. Yes. What about Terry Norris? Terry Norris was a very good fighter, a very technical fighter. Um, I think he probably did a little too much sparring in his days because it kind of got to him at the end. Mm-hmm. But uh, before that, Terry was a bad boy. Terry could have played any sport, boxing, basketball, football. Anything. Have you seen Nigel Ben's kid? Yes, he's what do you think? Good. He's strong. He looks strong. He's very strong. He don't have the technique that his dad has yet, but he's very strong. So if they keep working on him technically, he can be a good fighter. Eubank's kid is even better. Yeah, Eubank's kid Eubank's is awesome. Eubank's kid is awesome. Yeah. Eubank was some puncher, yeah, but huh? Yeah, his, his son is awesome. Yes, they both they both were punchers, and and uh, the both kids, their kids got a little more. Both of the kids are punchers. I know. Yeah. It's interesting like that. Yep. Julian Jackson, the Hulk. His kid didn't turn to be what he was, no. but he was a beast, a menace. You guys want to see real knockouts? The real knockouts. That knockout on Terry Norris <laughs> is so vicious. The incredible knockout ratio of Jackson. <laughs> That dude there. Julian Jackson. And he had a flat top like Patrick Ewing. Yes. All right, let's go to one more. A real flat top. A Jamaican proper flat yes. top. Yes. Julian Jackson, my man. Ryan? Hello? What's Ryan, up, Ryan, you're on the Ask Gary V Show with Roy Jones Jr. Holy shit. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's What's true. Up, man? What's up, Ryan? What's going on, guys? I'm good, brother. Um, basically, just a brief overview. I started a sports marketing um, company a couple years ago that focused on getting MMA fighters sponsorships and endorsements. Yep, yep. makes sense. And it, it really succeeded, got really good, got really close to the top end of the craft. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden I got hit with ocular melanoma, which is a rare eye cancer. Yeah. <sighs> okay. And so I lost my eye, lost every bit of savings, every bit of money that I had. Yes, sir. And now after getting a prosthetic that that has a soccer logo on it and (laughs) it's been seen a few million times by different articles fox sports and a bunch of other things that covered it um i'm trying to start a youtube channel that shows the inspiration and motivational side of athletes fans and sports personality okay i'm listening so with having gary v who's a insane fan of the Jets, the Knicks, um, and then having Roy Jones Jr., who's obviously the greatest time. boxer outside of Muhammad Ali. Thank you, my brother. Um, do you believe that, Roy? Yes, I do believe that. Straight up, you're number two straight, all time. Straight up, straight up. Who's number three? I don't know. It could be but a give it to me. I'm, listen, I got you here. I'm keeping you. Uh, give I mean, me a few seconds. I'll give you a second I'll while I keep listening. Seconds, yeah. I want to know who your number three is. So you got Ali, mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. I'm dying to see who's number. You pound for pound wise? Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. you're all. Uh, Should we Robinson? Yeah. Without a doubt. Definitely agree. Without a doubt. Yeah, Definitely I, agree. I, yeah. Okay. But, um, basically, my I'm question so is, and it, and it goes you to, guys don't even to know both of you guys. Boxing. <laughs> I'm sorry, keep but going. It, it, it goes to both of you guys. As far as, like, say, the motivational and inspirational side. Yes. Gary, you keep talking about failures and coming back from them, and, and I see it as losing an eye would be a massive financial failure and having to rebuild brands and, and, and emotional, turn that brother. into a positive. And emotional, my oh. man. Like, like the, you know, like, obviously I can't relate. Like, I know you know, like, the financial is one thing. When you have the ability to do what you did, you have a replicate, mm-hmm. and the fact that you want to build a YouTube channel right now, and I'm going to convince you to do a Facebook Watch channel instead in a few minutes, you okay. have the ability to do that again. Your eye's not coming back. Mm-hmm. I know, I can even what? tell by the tone of how you are talking mm-hmm. that you know you can get the financial. It's not fun that you were on the cusp and your fucking eye did this thing, but I can even tell by the way that you're talking that you know you can get the dollars back. Mm-hmm. Do you? I mean, it just takes, I mean, it takes some work, but no I shit. mean, as long as- My man, and, it and all takes work. Well, the other thing is, is two weeks ago, I found out I have Crohn's on top of it. So that's something that you can relate to as of well. Of course, so my brother AJ has it. Back. Yep, that eye is incredible. But, um, but basically, what I'd like to ask both of you is, with Roy having, having a few losses that knocked you down and, and seeing the, the pundits and stuff like that talk down about you and stuff, have there been fans 
that have contacted you or that you've seen stories that just watching you lose a fight or, or lose something and then coming back stronger has that a, like would a would, does that like affect you in any way? Uh, does course. that make it you want to go out and help more fans? And uh, of course, does just, just to see the the fan side as far because I know Gary helps a lot of athletes and stuff as well. I mean, does does that inspire the athlete as much as the athlete would inspire the fan? Yes, it does. That's the whole thing that inspires the athlete with the hope that that would happen. We go because we hope that one day somebody will see us and realize that we went through the same similar type things that they have gone through or are going through and that we didn't give up. We kept going. That's why I came back after the Olympics, after they robbed me of a gold medal. When I was in Seoul Korea, my goal was to quit boxing because of what had happened to me. When I got back and saw my kids that were on my amateur team at the time and saw the looks in their eyes, I said, how can you tell them in life ever that if something knocks you down, you got to get back up and keep going if you lay down and don't get back up. So I immediately had to change my mind, change my thought process, and start back fighting. And not only did I have to start back fighting, I had to go show them that just because you get knocked down don't mean you just come back, but you come back way, way, way stronger and harder than you did before you got knocked down. Roy, who reached out to you after your first... And again, I'm trying to paint a picture here. Guys, Roy... And you know, I'm, you know, he's here. It's not fun to talk about, but Roy is on the same plane as a Mike Tyson. Most of us did not see a scenario where Roy was ever going to lose a fight. Yeah, uh, which I'm sure you thought too. Yeah. So, who reached out to to Ryan's point? Who of the people that reached out to you? And I'm sure plenty did because you're a, a good dude. People, I'm sure. Football player, who, basketball player, who, somebody, everybody. Who reached out to you that meant the most for maybe a funny, weird reason? I, who who stayed? When I ask you that question, which call or reach out do you remember that stood the, out? The, the reach out that I remember, remember the most was when I got from the Olympics. Everybody was so happy. Everybody was happy to see me because of what I went through, what yep. I endured, had endured, and the way I, I did it. Yep. So everybody was so proud of me till I got to the young kids on my amateur team. Mm-hmm. They didn't give a damn about none of that. <laughs> All they gave a damn about was the last thing they heard me say, which was, I think I'm going to quit boxing. Yeah, they That's were worried about all that. that was in their eyes. They yep. weren't worried about nothing else. Yep. The world was going yep. in for them yep. if I quit fighting. Yeah, I get it. And that, Ryan, that's that, Ryan, that fixed me. a couple things. Um, Andy and I have been looking at your content while we're here. You have, mm. you have to very seriously consider a Facebook watch show instead of YouTube. For everybody listening, you know, just to get on, on the business uh, kick here for a minute, it is very difficult in a heavily mature YouTube to break out. Mm. It is very difficult. You have to be disproportionately incredible at tile images, at headlines, at understanding the algorithm, and on top of it, be remarkably talented. Meanwhile, Mm -hmm. Facebook, in its quest to be very competitive against YouTube and become a video player, is disproportionately helping Facebook watch shows show up in news feeds, and there are far less people producing shows on Facebook. You have a supply and demand issue. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. This is systematic, similar to Eastern European growth in boxing. I'm begging you to get very serious, educated, Google Facebook watch shows, learn everything you can, and immediately go all in and create your Facebook uh, show tomorrow. Now, the only other question I've got is a few of the the larger name, uh, like soccer players and athletes, how do I go around having to pay insane amounts just for a an shout interview. out because a lot of easy okay. easy the person that asks never has the leverage okay the way you do it is by listening to me right now and buying up inexpensive property it's called facebook watch it's Malibu okay. 45 years ago, I promise you. This is what I've been historically good at. I don't have plaques of Uber and Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr. You know, It's for me to brag about my one skill, which is I can see it a few seconds earlier. And it doesn't, take, Andy, you know this. I mean, you're, you're doing it with me. It doesn't take a rocket scientist. We're just practitioners of our craft, just like, you know, just like James Tony's shoulder, right? Mm-hmm. It's exactly. practitionership. Exactly. It will 100%, mm-hmm. I'm not guessing here. You know, everyone's like, mm. yeah, you did. I'm not guessing. Musically, I got a love the, the other day because I was right. It was already big. It wasn't like I guessed. I'm not guessing here, Ryan. Here's how you do it. You get to interview the biggest soccer players in the world when they ask mm. for you to be on their sh- your show. Go and build okay. a huge audience. It can be done on Facebook. 
And when you tell Messi 14 million soccer fans watch your program, I have a funny feeling when Messi has a new app. He's going to want to come and put it on your program. <laughs> and there you go. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? Yeah, because I mean, it's yes, yes, sir. And I mean, it, it's not just the, those people. It's when it spiders out into like of course. the Usain Bolts and all of those course. guys that, listen, are, that are fans. Listen, that kind of soccer's the, one of the biggest, if not the down. biggest global sport in the world. Yep. There's tons of fans of it. Even America gives a crap now. Obviously, the U.S. team not making it will slow it down, but will not stop it. Nope. Go and create a tremendous show on Facebook Watch. Hold your breath and be patient for 24 months and watch them come to you. Okay. All right, now, buddy. do I need to kind of build it through Instagram as well or just Every, solely off Everywhere of- you have attention, you drive towards that spot. You should go change okay. your email header at the bottom or footer, excuse me, right now and l- have a link that says, check out my new show link. Roy, I don't know how much you email or if you do or you don't, but if you do even once a day, change your footer and say, check out my new app and link to this app. Like people aren't siphoning attention from other places to the place that they wanted to. Right. So of course, Instagram and your email and go knock on your fucking neighbor's door and tell him to watch the show. That's right. Okay. Good. See ya. Thank you. Sir. Roy. The, the big part of this show is that every guest gets to ask the Vayner Nation a question. It could mm-hmm. be anything. You could be getting insight to your app, mm-hmm. a question that you're curious about mm-hmm. in culture, in boxing, in life. Uh, but that is the question of the day. You get to ask it. What is your question of the day of the audience? They will answer in Facebook and YouTube. We'll get thousands and thousands of comments. What would you like to ask them? I would like to ask you guys, how many of y'all are going to participate in this app? <laughs> how many of y'all are going to try to figure out Learn my style of boxing from my app. That's what I want to know. I appreciate the right hook to end the show. My man, (laughs) it's a real pleasure, real honor for me. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Roy Jones Jr., happy holidays to everybody. We'll see ya. You keep asking questions, we'll keep answering them. Ta-da.